We'll begin. Hi all, I am Preeti from University of Texas at Austin. I am going to present my paper on investigating the 1180 standard for millimeter wave automotive radar. The co-authors of the paper are Nuria Prelsis from University de Vigo, Spain and Robert Heath from University of Texas at Austin. First of all, let's get into an application of automotive radar, such as automatic cruise control. In this application, there is a host vehicle and there is a target vehicle. The host vehicle is trying to keep a constant time gap from the target vehicle. So what it does is, it estimates the range and velocity of the target vehicle using signals, such as conventional radar waveform, linear chirp signals. However, they are not standardized. These systems are generally available in luxury cars and cost around $1,100 or $1,500. So automotive radars are expensive and they are property that is not standardized. Then let's go to the vehicular communication systems, which are based on standards like DSRC, which operates at 5.9 gigahertz with 75 megahertz of band. They can also be applied for applications like forward collision warning and cooperative automatic cruise control. However, this standard has low data rate because of the low bandwidth. We can use millimeter wave communication for high data rate. However, it's yet not adopted. So, communication alone is not enough for traveler safety application. That's why we propose to use joint millimeter wave vehicular communication and radar. This will allow to increase penetration rate for vehicular communication, which has yet not widespread. Efficient spectrum usage, because we are using the same spectrum for both radar and communication. Low cost due to single waveform and hardware. Increased performance enabled by sharing of information from radar to communication and communication to radar. The joint system can now be built on the existing millimeter wave standard such as 82.11 AD. And it will have high data rate because of high bandwidth. Now there have been some work on integrated communication radars, such that the core domain, like DSSS. In this, you have secure and high resolution ranging, but you have imperfect autocorrelations. Then there are some approaches in frequency domain where you use OFDM signals they have better correlation than the core domain. However, they're complex and they suffer from high peak to average ratio. And they have complex signal processing. So then there is another approach that is time domain duplex, which is easy to implement, but inefficient use of time. Because when you are sending radar, you are doing nothing for communication. Then there is another approach, which is standardized approach, where we use standards like 802.11p. And in this approach, the authors have shown that they can do automotive radar application. However, it suffers from poor accuracy and resolution, which is required in automatic cruise control applications. Thus, it motivates us to have a standard-based radar solution for which is based on the communication. Now, the contribution of our paper is that we are leveraging the 82.11 AD millimeter wave wireless LAN standard for joint communication and radar, which has never been done before. It motivates a common standard at the millimeter wave band, as I suggested earlier, that radar doesn't have any standard for automotive radar operation, like communication. And since currently the luxury cars only have automotive radars, which is quite costly, and WLAN chips are cheaper, having a joint system based on the 1180 chip may lower the cost. In this paper, we have exploited the preamble and pilots of 1180, and we have also leveraged the existing WLAN receiver algorithms to achieve a good radar performance. So to understand more about the paper, first we will go through some introduction of single carrier frame of 11 AD. In 11 AD, there is a preamble and header, the sum data blocks and optional subfield, 
we have leveraged this preamble which has a very good goal structure which can be exploited for radar operation. What do I mean by that is it has a very good ambiguity function which is a function of delay and Doppler shift. It shows how the received signal performs when it is being distorted by delay and Doppler shift after match filtering. So we see that at zero Doppler shift there is no side loops. That means it has it will have no ambiguity. And this is an ideal autocorrelation function for radars. Hence, this can be used, these Cole sequences that we find in the channel estimation sequence and the goal we find in the short training field can be used for radar purpose. Let us go to the system model of our paper. Here we assume that there are two cars this car, as I said, like host, and this is the target car. It's sending a signal, okay, which will be based on 11 AD. Then it reflects back the radar echo from car B, reflects back to car A. And then that received signal is given by Y of K. Then you have beam forming, receive beam forming, and transmit beam forming, which is being done here. And we assume that these antennas are close to each other so that they see the point target which is representing this car B as a single location. And they are pointing to the car in front without blockage. That means we assume that it is more line of sight type transmission. We assume the channel is assumed to be constant in a core and processing interval. And we assume that this car is within the beam width of the car A. Based on these assumptions, we can simplify this as a complex constant factor which is based on the radar cross section of car B and the path loss distance factor. It has a delay because of the round trip time. It has a Doppler shift because car B is moving related to car A. Some phase noise and noise, additive white Gaussian noise. Now this beauty of this paper is we have used the already existing WLAN receiver algorithms to estimate the radar parameters. That means this time delay which communication tries to find through frame synchronization or time synchronization techniques and this Doppler shift which it tries to find using frequency offset estimation technique can be used to find the range and the velocity of the car ahead. How? Let's go further into the detail. So first, we have to detect the vehicle. This vehicle detection can be done using typical WLAN frame detection or synchronization techniques. What we do is we have a correlation bet or between the received signals which are separated from ND distance. This is like a training sequences. And the length of the training sequence is nt. Since our goal is sequence is 128 length, we choose nt as 128. Then we see that the plateau of the R joint is actually above some threshold. Ideally, it should be 1. However, because of noise and system impairments, it is not exactly 1. So we choose a threshold to get robustness, but it is less than 1. We have chosen as 0.25 for demonstration purpose and we have chosen that it is above that threshold for 256 samples for accuracy. Then this is, uh, okay, let's just talk about the results. So we see that above my, minus 2 dB, we can achieve high probability of accuracy. Then we go for range estimation. There are different ways of range estimation that we have come up. The time synchronization can be done as a coarse or as fine. That is, if we use a preamble star detection as a range estimation technique, then we can have a coarse range estimation. That is what is this curve, and we have done it in two ways. One is a constant threshold, as I talked about, and one is an adaptive threshold based on the statistics of the received signal. 
However, when we use fine synchronization techniques like which is based on STF correlation with Golay sequences, that is we are correlating the received signal with the Golay sequence or when we take symbol boundary detection which is also based between the like the STF and CF there is in between a boundary minus GA128 when we use the phase inversion technique to get the symbol boundary detection we get this green curve and because of the method 2 we get this red curve we see that we can achieve an MSC of 2.81 micro which is the desired range accuracy that is it comes out as 0.1 meter accuracy using the WLAN estimation techniques for only a single frame. Then let's go to velocity estimation. Then we can do velocity estimation using the existing Doppler frequency shift estimation techniques. This can be applied on two things. First, the strut training field of the SC5 frame and second, on the pilots. We see that when we use it on the short training field, we get an accuracy which is not that good. However, when we apply it into uh, the pilots, we achieve the desired accuracy much faster than the one with the short training field. However, using both the methods, we achieve the 0.1 meter per second accuracy which corresponds to normalized mean square error of 2.78 micro at high SNR. So yes, we can achieve the desired accuracy of 0.1 meter per second using 11 AD. However, not at low SRR, we achieve it at high SNRs using a single frame. So we conclude that we can achieve the desired range accuracy of 0.1 meter with a high probability of detection using a single frame of 11 AD. Indeed, we can achieve accuracy more than the existing automotive radar because of the high bandwidth available in 11 AD. The velocity estimation technique achieves accuracy of 0.1 meter per second at high SNR. Low SNR, some more techniques can be devised to achieve it, which we do in the future work. And then we extend the framework for a more complex channel. We incorporate V2V channel models at the millimeter wave bond for the future work. So for example, we, in this paper, we have worked on this particular model when you in the car is totally in this beam. However, if this blue car comes within this beam, then how would you detect the red car? This can be a future problem where you can have a complex channel. Thank you. Okay, I'm done. Okay. Yeah.